Hi, I'm going to do lab problem number two. Um, only parts A and B are appropriate this year. We don't need to do the rest of it, so I'll explain that as I get to it. Okay, so um, a student is instructed to prepare 100 milliliters of 1.250 molar NaOH from a stock solution. Um, that's 5.000 molar NaOH. The student follows the proper safety guidelines. And so it says calculate the volume of 5.00 molar NaOH needed to accurately prepare 100 milliliters of the 1.250 molar NaOH. And you'll notice everything has four sig figs. So we're going to start out and we want to know our volume that we need. So we say M1 V1 equals M2 V2. This is a dilution problem. So M1, um, actually, we're going to use this as our first solution because this is what we want to make. So I want to put it in liters. So I'm going to take my 100 milliliters, and in my head, I'm dividing it by 1,000 to get it into liters. OK, so I have 0 0.1000, four sig figs, liters, times my um, molarity and that's 1.250 molar. That's moles per liter. So when we're done, we'll have moles on this side. And now we're going to take our um, M2 and our V2. We don't know what the V2 is. So we're going to start with 5.000 molar, and then we'll say times x. OK, dilution. So basically, we have to have the same number of moles on both sides but we're going to use a different volume to get that, okay? So molar, I'm sorry, molarity times volume, molarity times volume. If we divide it out, we'll be able to get the volume of the new solution. And we should get 0 0.02500 liters or 25.00 milliliters. So ultimately, you didn't really have to turn it into liters, but it's kind of a good practice to get into when you're doing molarity because you know that it's not moles per milliliter, it's moles per liter. Okay, so we made our solution by putting 25 milliliters. Let's talk about that. We're going to put 25 milliliters into what to make a molar solution? Well, guess what the next question is? Describe the steps in a procedure to pre prepare this using that stock solution. So do we need a balance to do this? Well, we know it's got to be molar, so we've got to find the flask that gives us a molar solution. And hopefully you remember, this is the one. OK, we want it to be four sig figs. Graduated cylinder would not cut it. So we had to have four sig figs, so we needed our volumetric flask. Remember, it has one line. And when we get to that line, it's exactly milliliters. OK, so it's even more precise than we need. All right, so volumetric flask. Then um, how are we going to get this started? So how am I going to put my um, stock solution into this? So I want to find something. Am I going to use an Erlenmeyer flask? Let me just go through this. This is what an Erlenmeyer flask looks like. That's that. Burette is the one where we put it on the ring sand. And we use it for titration. And it's really long. And it has a stopcock here. OK, and put it on a little bread clamp. An eyedropper? Are those calibrated? Do we need a drying oven? Cross it out if you know we don't need it. We don't need it. OK. A Florence flask. A Florence flask looks like this. And we didn't really use them very much. I think I put a solution in it once. It has no graduations on it. It's not like this, where it's very precise and it has that one graduated line. Florence flask is just a flask that you can store samples in. I'm going to take get rid of that, because we don't need that. All right, graduated cylinder, 100 mil graduated cylinder. The ones we had in our class were plus or minus 
0.5 milliliters. Okay, is that going to give us enough sig figs that we need? Not really, when we want to maintain our four sig figs. And then we have a 25 mil pipette, which usually has gradations to the tenth, um, to the hundredth of a mil. And then a wash bottle of distilled water. Okay, crucibles. Crucibles were those little white ceramic dishes that we used when we created magnesium oxide from magnesium metal. So that is not an appropriate thing for us to use here. And a beaker is not appropriate because it is very non-precise. It's usually they're about plus or minus 10 mils or more. Okay, so we don't need that. We don't need that. Um, this sounds pretty good. Let's look at those. Um, Erlenmeyer flasks, we don't ever do any measurements in those. We just use them when we're doing titrations, etc. A balance, we're using all liquids here, so not really needing that. 50 mil burette, well, if I put something in a 50 mil burette, it would definitely give me nice precision, but it's a little more than we need. My suggestion is the pipette. Okay, it's more precise than the graduated cylinder, and it um, has a different purpose than the burette. It's more um, mobile, let's say. Okay, so we have our 100 mil volumetric. We'll have our stock bottle of, well, we don't need any of these. We're going to cross those out. Our stock bottle of 5.000 molar NaOH. Okay, now nowhere in here, let's see, it says the students follow the proper safety guidelines. It doesn't have the safety equipment, but I've seen questions where you needed to know what safety equipment. And you would say because it's a very strong sodium hydroxide, you'd have gloves and goggles and an apron. Okay, so that's expected. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the graduated cylinder because it's definitely not precise enough for what we're looking for. But here we go. So we're going to take our pipette. Our pipette's going to go in here, and we're going to pipette out exactly, and actually, um, and when they say 25 mil pipette, I'm thinking they're thinking volumetric pipette. And we take out our exact number of 25 mils. We would pipette it right into our 100 mil volumetric flask, and then we would fill it to the line. Okay, so I've done this before. So let's see. My directions that I had said to myself were, I have 25.0 mil stock is measured using a 25 mil volumetric pipette. This is placed in a 100 mil volumetric flask. Dilute solution with distilled water about halfway. I usually swirl it at that point. And then dilute to the line using a wash bottle to get to meniscus line. And that's how I would prepare a 100 mil volumetric solution. And we have done those in class a number of times. So hopefully, you know, we didn't do 100, but we did like 25 and stuff. Okay, I want to look at the rest of this problem. Part C, it says we have 50 mil of a weak monoprotic acid and it's titrated. No titration on this exam. So we're not going to get into that. We don't have to know our indicators, which ones work this year. You'll need to know them if you go it further in chemistry, but for this year we, we didn't have to um, cram about that. And then for this next one they're saying that we added, um, basically they're making a buffer and they're trying to find the Ka of the buffer. So we don't have to learn that. And I feel like that's all there is to this problem. Let me see if there's anything in here. No. Okay, so maybe it wasn't thorough we didn't need all the pieces of it, but knowing how to make the solution and understanding about dilutions, these are lab problems that we have dealt with over the years. So hopefully you will remember. Thanks.